Why does this matter for house prices? The problem becomes that house prices have come down, interest rates have come down, and wages are no longer going up. If wages are no longer going up, then interest rates or house prices will need to do most of the work to improve housing affordability because the Federal Reserve is not expected to cut at their July meeting. There's an 80% chance that they'll hold the existing rate. And even if you fast forward to their next meeting, the largest chance is that they'll cut by 25 basis points and eventually cut by another 25 basis points in the October meeting. And that's what the market is currently signaling. The Bank of Canada really can't get too far ahead of the Federal Reserve because we buy most of our goods in USD. And so if we get too far ahead of the Federal Reserve and the Canadian dollar gets devalued, then the cost of our goods that we're importing goes up relative to our currency. And that's the currency that we make our money in, which would be inflationary or imported inflation for Canadians. Now, wage growth is edging higher based on last month's reading, but it's kind of volatile and generally with unemployment rising and job vacancies disappearing, relying on wage growth heading into a recessionary environment is probably not going to deliver the housing affordability improvements that we need. So we've got interest rates. Our interest rates portion of the housing affordability Venn diagram here is off the table. Our incomes portion of the Venn diagram is probably off the table or potentially off the table. This means that the only lever in this housing affordability equation is house prices. If wage growth isn't going up and rates aren't going down, then the only thing left in the equation to change is house prices. If we want housing affordability to improve, the market wants cheaper houses so that people can buy houses. People want more housing affordability. It's good for the economy. It gives them more disposable income on top of their mortgage payments that they can spend on goods and services and growing their businesses, et cetera. There's so many benefits to having a more affordable housing market, including for the real estate profession where realtors make more money if people are buying more houses. And that's why I've never really understood why realtors like to cheer on house price growth so much. So if we jump to RBC's forecast here, it kind of tracks based on their assumptions that wage growth is going to stagnate and rates are not going to come down. 